Hello guys, my name is Tom Antos and welcome to the 2019 Cinema Camera Tests. Now before I start, I wanted to give a big shout out and a thank you to uh, Able Cine, first of all, for letting us use their space and their gear uh, to do these camera tests. They rent out a lot of you know amazing quality gear. Um, you can also buy stuff from them, so definitely check them out. I'm going to provide the link uh, to their website in the description below. I uh, also want to thank my two beautiful models. Uh, obviously my wife, Chrissy Vakas. she's got her own YouTube channel uh, and her Instagram. So if you guys want, again, I'm going to provide the links to her stuff. And also I wanted to thank our other model, Victoria Preston. Again, I'm going to provide all the links to her social uh, down below. And of course, I want to thank my friends Ketak and Miguel for coming out and helping me do this test. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys the results that I got while testing these very different cameras right next to each other. I'm going to tell you why I did it, how I did this test, and also what my thoughts are. But before I jump into that, first I want to kind of show you guys the results based on your votes. If you're not aware, in the previous video, I did actually post the samples from the different cameras that I've been testing, but I did not put the actual names of the cameras. I just simply labeled them as A, B, C, and D cameras. And I had you guys pick your favorite. And the reason why I did that is because I knew the second I put the actual camera names, a lot of people just have preconceived notions or or they look at you know the price of the camera and they automatically say, oh, well, the most expensive is usually the best. And the results will actually, I think, surprise you. Uh, I know they really surprised me. So altogether, I actually had over 2,000 people participate in this poll, uh, which is uh, really, really good. So thank you guys for, for letting me know which camera you think looked best. Now, if you were to just look at the poll results in my previous YouTube video, then the winner was camera C with 44%. Uh, then it was camera A with 28%. Then camera B with 18%. And finally, camera D with only 8%. But of course, YouTube was not the only place where I had you guys vote. So I actually had people voting on my Facebook page, both personal and the public page. Uh, I also had them on my website, even on Instagram. Uh, and all together, calculating all of those votes and uh, basically averaging it out, the final scores are in the first place is camera C with 39%. Then we have camera A with 28%. Now very closely behind that is camera B with 26%. And camera D with 7% only. So now for the big reveal of what are these cameras. So first the winner, which is camera C, is actually the Ursa Mini Pro from Blackmagic. Uh, you guys picked as your favorite camera. Now the second place is another Blackmagic camera, which is the Pocket 6K. Third place is the Airy Alexa Mini. And finally, in the last place, we have the Red Raven. So when it comes to the final results uh, based on your votes, I was really surprised because, again, I knew which camera was which. And, uh, you know, I, I automatically also assumed the Airy Alexa, the most expensive uh, and it's the most widely used cameras, especially in the, in the film world. And at the end of the day, I also just love shooting with it. I love the image quality. So I automatically kind of gravitated at that being the winner. Uh, then uh, I thought, well, the, the Ursa Mini Pro or maybe the Red will come in a second. Uh, and you guys yeah, definitely picked uh, the Ursa Mini Pro as the winner. And then I thought that the cheapest, which is the Pocket 6K, would be the last one. But... Again, as you guys can see, that's not what the you know the polls show. And again, this is based on a blind test, meaning you know everybody who voted did not know which camera was which. So what does this show you? Uh, well, I, th I think it just kind of proves that a we're living in a really the best times. I think as filmmakers, meaning you can get a you know a top of the line professional cinema camera like the Arri Alexa, or you can get something you know that you can afford as an indie filmmaker starting out. Like, for example, the Packet 6K camera, uh, which is only $2,500, which is about 20 times cheaper than the Arri Alexa. And, and, but as you can see, when you, when you just look at, at the final image, uh, they don't differ that much. Now, obviously, here we're just judging the image quality. And when you're going to pick a camera for a project that you're working on, uh, you're, you're almost never going to look just at the image quality, looking at the overall camera package and uh, obviously looking at the cost, but also looking at uh, the reliabilities of the cameras and all that stuff. So that's where a lot of the differences come in and, and the reason why certain cameras are a lot more expensive than others. 
Now let's talk about why I did these camera tests. Now, every year I actually do one or sometimes even multiple of these camera tests just to see how the different cameras that I work with on various films perform next to each other. Now, the reason is not for me to kind of pick a winner because I'm never going to be relying on just one camera. Really, the main reason for me is to kind of see can I, for example, use two or three of these different cameras on one project and kind of what I can expect from them what are the weaknesses, strengths of each camera, and really the most importantly, can I match all the different cameras in you know, the final color graded project? And since I recently purchased a Blackmagic Pocket 6K camera, uh, I definitely wanted to see again how it's gonna play along with some of the other cameras that I often work with. Now let's talk about how these tests were done. Uh, again, these are tests for me, they're not scientific tests, and again, they're not tests to pick the, the winner. They're just, again, to see on a typical scenario how I'm gonna use these cameras alongside each other. So in this test, we actually did not have identical lens on all of the cameras. And I know that's what a lot of people were complaining about. And you know, they noticed that behind the scenes and they were like, well, wait a minute, Tom, you can't put a rock in on, you know, and compare it with a camera that has, you know, the CP2s, for example, from Zeiss. Now, why didn't I use the same lens on all the cameras? Uh, after all, again, I'm at Albacini and I could have very easily uh, ended up, you know, just getting all of the, the same lenses. But the reason why I didn't do that is because, again, I kind of paired the cameras with the kind of lenses that I'm usually typically personally using on these cameras. And I'm obviously not gonna get the Blackmagic Packet 6K camera, which is, uh, again, only a two and a half thousand dollar camera and pair it with a lens that's, you know, I'll cost a lot more than the camera itself. Uh, I'm usually gonna pair it with a cheaper lens and also a lens that's smaller. Uh, the compact primes are not small or light lenses. And the reason why I would use the, the Packet 6K is because it is a small camera. And so it's easier to put this camera in different places where, for example, I wouldn't be able to fit the uh, Arri Alexa or Ursa Mini or the RED cameras. Now on the Ursa Mini, I'd end up using the uh, Zine lens and on the Red Raven, we used another compact prime from Zeiss. We did various different tests, some which were just with these test charts to kind of see how the cameras uh, handle really fine detail, the moiré effect, uh, also the, uh, the rolling shutter, how it is on the cameras. Uh, then we did tests with our two models. And in this case, uh, on purpose, again, had, you know, somebody with very light skin and somebody with darker skin uh, to kind of see again how the cameras perform on the different skin complexions. Uh, in the back there, we had a kind of a backlight. So as they're rotating their heads and you guys are watching these tests, again, pay attention to, all, again, how the highlights in the hair or, for example, on their cheekbones and stuff like that. We also did various uh, over and under exposure tests, which, again, are going to show you the strengths and weaknesses of each of the sensors uh, in these cameras and how well you can also recover information, whether it's in the highlights or shadows. So, again, while I'm talking, you guys just watch these tests. And, of course, if you guys just want to download the full rest 10-bit version of all these tests uh, you can find that on my website now all of the lenses had the exact same focal length 50 millimeters uh, and uh, they all had the same settings now when it comes to cameras uh, they all had the same settings except the packet 6k uh, so me meaning they all had the same iso uh, the same shutter angle uh, the same white balance and uh, all of that stuff uh, the, the reason why the Packet 6K wasn't the same is simply because the native ISO of all the other cameras is 800 versus the Packet 6K and it has 400 and 3200 native ISO. So I set it to the lowest, uh, which is the 400. And because of that, again, I had to compensate with the shutter angle uh, you know, to get the same kind of exposure. Now, why did I want to test all the cameras in their native ISO? Well, because uh, when I'm working on films, Usually, and I mean like 95% of the time, I'm going to be shooting always in the native ISO of the camera because that's where the, each camera performs the best. And I'm going to adjust my exposure using aperture or using ND filters, all that stuff. Uh, only if I really don't have any, any other way, that's when I'm going to switch the ISO. But otherwise, I always try to shoot in native ISOs in all the cameras. Well, I'm actually very, very pleasantly surprised uh, that the Blackmagic Packet 6K camera uh, is actually playing along so nicely with all these other uh, really expensive uh, and just a lot more advanced cinema cameras. And that makes me really happy because uh, it means that, yeah, I can use this and not have to worry as much about 
being able to match the image quality uh, of that camera to some of the other cameras. Uh, I would actually say, again, because the Packet 6K shoots in the highest resolution from all of these cameras, uh, it's actually maybe too sharp for me, which is funny because a lot of the people who voted, I know were saying that that's like one thing they liked. They said that the, the Packet 6K looked the sharpest and most lifelike. Personally, as a cinematographer, when I'm working on a film, I don't want to create an overly sharp image because that kind of almost makes it look too video-like. But again, it's good to know that the camera does perform very well in terms of the dynamic range. Obviously, it's not the same as the, the Arri Alexa or the Ursa Mini, but as you can see, it's, it's comparable. Now, especially if you spend the time in post-production and you kind of play around with matching the colors, which I found can be fairly you know, easily achieved. Now, all of the shots that I've been showing you up until now uh, have been using the settings basically that were set in the camera. I did not change the white balance or anything like that afterwards, even though we shot on all of the cameras in RAW. And when it comes to the post-production side, all I did is I took the native LAT or the image profile, the, the, the gamma basically, that the manufacturers of each camera provide and I just applied that to convert uh, all of these flat looking log images since all of the cameras were shooting again in RAW uh, and this way I was able to convert that those flat images into something that has the proper color and contrast. And definitely when you look at these cameras even without me doing any kind of secondary color grading to kind of match the cameras uh, I mean they, they actually match pretty well. I would say the only camera that really stood out and kind of looked too reddish and almost, uh, I would say, almost like too saturated sometimes was the, the Red Raven. That, that one I wasn't the biggest fan of. But for example, the Ursa Mini Pro matches very well with the Arri Alexa, which I already knew from previous projects I worked on. Uh, but again, I was very pleasantly surprised that even the Packet 6K camera, uh, even though, again, it doesn't have as, as big of a dynamic range, it still captured really nice skin tones and, and just overall the image kind of looked very similar. It just again, without even doing any post-secondary color grading. So what's my final sort of takeaway from all of this and, and something that I hope you guys remember after watching this video is, uh, is that I think today it really doesn't almost matter which camera you can afford because as you can see from these tests, a camera that costs two and a half thousand dollars matches very well to a camera that costs $50,000 or you know, another one that costs $6,000. So they're all very uh, different in price, but when it comes to performance, it's definitely not that much of a difference. So really, again, it's gonna come down to uh, obviously reliability, the kind of product support you're gonna get from these different companies. But if you're somebody who's just starting out and obviously your budget is gonna be very limited and, and it's gonna dictate a lot in what you can get, then again, get whatever it is that you can afford, whether it's the Blackmagic, you know, 6K camera, or maybe even the Blackmagic 4K camera. If you guys see my review of the Packet 6K, where I kind of compare it the, the two, you'll notice there's, again, not that much of a difference. Now, I am going to be doing another video, a sort of an exclusive sort of follow-up, where I just show you a lot more tests uh, between the 4K and the 6K cameras, and kind of talk about it and answer all of your questions about those cameras. So definitely stay tuned for that. But again, whether it's one of those cameras or whether you get, like, for example, some of the other exciting cameras on the market these days, whether it's the, the Z cams or the, the Mavo 11 and all these other cool cameras that, again, I wish I had time to test out all of these cameras. Unfortunately, I don't. Uh, maybe I'll do some more camera tests just for you guys, uh, comparing some of these other ones. Uh, kind of side by side but again I, I think all of these cameras these days can produce beautiful images it really just comes down then to your skills and really to the kind of stories that you want to tell because at the end of the day an average viewer is not really going to care whether you shot something with a camera that costs fifty thousand dollars or two and a half thousand dollars what they're really going to care about is do you have them engaged do you have some kind of an interesting story something you want to pass on to your audience and if it is and you know they they want to hear more that's what uh, you're really going to get rewarded for uh, and nobody's going to again reward you because you use the most expensive camera or because you could afford uh, the more expensive camera than the guy next to you anyways that's it for this video again if you guys want to see the full resolution of all these tests you can download the sample files on my website tomantosfilms.com so head on over there and while you're there subscribe to my newsletter so you're notified of future posts or videos that i do about other camera tests and, and gear film reviews or or for example when i release my next film uh, again you'll find out all of that stuff and a lot more on my website uh, and i'll see you guys in the next one bye